It's the Friday. I'm Stan Houston. This is the Jesus Entrepreneur. And indeed, it is the day which we call Good Friday. And it is also today will be at sundown, the first day of Passover in the Jewish tradition and celebration. They come together in a very unusual and unique way to present a story. But in presenting a story, they, of course, do what all stories do. They challenge us to change, to uh, think differently, perhaps to act differently, perhaps to seek different and deeper experiences of what is really true. So we're hoping that uh, in the next few minutes on this Good Friday day, we'll uh, talk about why they call it Good Friday. And then a couple of things that happened that can be very important for you, your life, your business, especially for you, the Christian entrepreneur. All of that's coming up right now on The Jesus Entrepreneur. Day by day, day by day. And indeed, we do welcome you. We've been going through this week. We put together about four or five programs this week. Oftentimes it's three, maybe four, but hopefully we speak when we have something worthwhile saying and something that can help you in your life and your business and in building your brand. That's what we're all about. Again, my name is Stan Houston, and I'm a business performance coach. I'm the co-founder of the Christian Entrepreneur Network. I have a lifetime of experience as an international broadcaster, as a worldwide teacher, and as a business performance coach, primarily to uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners, helping them make their mark in the marketplace. And I'm so glad that you can join us. You can find out more about us as we are going and growing and making a better website, a web stage. We kind of perform on it in some ways. We show you what we can do and how we can help you. It's tcentrepreneur.org, tcentrepreneur.org. You're going to find there's some uh, interesting videos there, and there will be more of them. Particularly, there's a video right now. It's about 40 minutes. It's a program that I did, you know, kind of an under an hour course uh, called God Wants You to Be an Entrepreneur. That's right. I just come right out and say it. God Wants You to Be an Entrepreneur. So uh, why don't you this weekend uh, take a few minutes to look at it and share it with somebody who might be thinking about entrepreneurship. Because indeed, God wants you to be an entrepreneur, or at least he wants you to think and act like one. Well, just let that sit on your head for a while, but take the 40 minutes to see the program Once again, tcentrepreneur.org, if you have any questions that uh, I can help you with about the program, about your life, your business, if you think that what you hear from me could be helpful and useful, or perhaps I can uh, share something or know something that might be helpful to you, if you have any questions or comments, just very simply, radioedge77 at gmail.com, radioedge77 at gmail.com, the Radio Edge uh, Studio on Route 77, near Tucson, Arizona, in the southwestern part of the United States. We're glad you could be with us. Now today, the question, why do they call it Good Friday? This is the day, and I lived uh, in many parts of the world, particularly in the Latin American part of the world, where this day was a dark day. I mean, every business closed down. That was just the way it was, at least in the part of the area that I lived in. People did what I'm doing today. Oftentimes they wore black. Uh, There was a somberness to all things. Uh, Even those people who weren't particularly religious, at least in their usual life and expression, this was a day they honored. This was a day that uh, they made sure that they went to uh, worship or mass or in some way uh, uh, commemorated, if not celebrated, Uh, the moment of Good Friday. Now, why is it called Good Friday? Well, 
I will let you do that. I once did a program on that. Radio in Netherlands called up and said they knew a little bit about my background. This was many years ago. They knew I'd been involved in missionary religious radio, so one of my friends was a program producer, and she said, come in and tell us why they call it good. Well, I'm not going to go into that, but you can look it up, because it's actually quite a mixed-up story. Billy Graham will give you the traditional uh, interpretation is that it's good, not because of what happened today, but because of what happened after today. The uh, uh, resurrection of Jesus, the uh, defeat of of the power of sin and death in our lives. So uh, it's not good because of the actions and activities of the day. It's certainly good because what was redeemed from the day, what God's power made good from the day. And so that's why some people actually say that uh, good uh, should mean it's from an old word. It's God's day. (laughs) It's God's Friday. Not necessarily good, but The good and the God come together. So some people think it was God's Friday was the the beginning of the word. In many places, it's actually called, you know, Passion Friday, particularly in the Russian Orthodox tradition. It's Passion Friday. Sometimes other people would think of it uh, simply as the term good, which means holy. And a holy Friday is oftentimes, or sacred Friday. Well, if you're more than interested in that, I'll let you, uh, you know, you do what you do. You, you go and you Google it and find out from Wikipedia or someplace else why they call it good. And uh, I oftentimes ask people, how do you think or act on this day? What do you do? Now, in my case, uh, I'm putting this program together in the uh, late morning. Around the uh, late afternoon, I start getting ready for my thoughtfulness for the day. My wife and I will go for communion and uh, what we would call Holy Friday services and uh, think about the profound power and the uh, love that was shown that day. And I'm also remembering that uh, last night, Thursday night, at uh, the dinner time, at the Last Supper, uh, at the washing of their feet, and I would encourage you to go back and listen to yesterday's program, is uh, that uh, uh, out of all of that stuff, you know, all of the things that came out of that, what happens is that uh, Jesus said, you know, when you do this, remember me. In remembrance of me. And today... It was the thief on the cross who deserved perhaps to die, who looked at Jesus and said, remember me. And I kind of think that, in fact, I kind of know that Jesus said in so many words, it's a deal. It's a deal. I will remember you. And as my friend Tim Hare has promised us and told us, particularly in a program which we'll do in next week on failure, one of the things to remember is that indeed Jesus remembers us, doesn't forget us. And perhaps that certainly makes it Good Friday. He promised he'll remember us. Good What's the lesson for the day? I've always found this to be a rather interesting day, and so it's a, it's a little bit of a thought with me, and uh, I think it's a little bit original. I hope it is. I, I try not just to copy everybody else's stuff. Um, I try to think myself through some of this and see if I can find something that will be helpful to you. But may I do this, and we'll try and keep it somewhat short, because we've got lots to do. We've got uh, ways to think and uh, pray about and uh, get ready for the uh, activities. I don't know if we'd call them festivities, but in some cases that's a good word because it helps us remember that we are remembered. But um, Pontius Pilate is certainly the major character along with Jesus. You know, Pilate didn't like to come to Jerusalem. You know, that's uh, the big... He would prefer to be up north a bit, you know, on the Mediterranean where things are nice. And so obviously because it was Passover and because the Romans are really set, 
uh, the religious authorities are particularly set because they know that at the Passover time, this is the time when uh, things can happen. There's lots of people from all over who've come to Jerusalem because you're supposed to go to Jerusalem. And in many cases, they just kind of temporarily put the uh, boundaries of the city limits out so that everybody in the neighboring area could say, oh, yes, I'm in Jerusalem for Passover. They're ready. And Pilate's there because he, he's got to be there for the day. And he obviously has to kind of give them some, some uh, you know, thoughtful allegiance to the Jewish tradition. But he also needs to be there because there could be trouble. And uh, indeed, there was. And so Pilate, uh, and you have all seen the story. You've all seen the story portrayed many times, both in uh, church plays and uh, varieties of films. Pilate is there, uh, and he's been portrayed in many ways. You know, is this a guy who just wants to get out of the deal? He, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do with the character of Pilate. And I'm not going to do much with that. To say, obviously, he was a conflicted man. He was there because he was trying to get his ticket punched so that he could get back to Rome and live the good life. He'd put in his time. He had been out in the boonies, and now he had you know, got the ticket punched, and now he can live the good life in Rome. So he's trying to get through it. He doesn't want trouble. doesn't want to cause trouble. wants to keep trouble down. He wants to please Caesar, and the crowd knows that. Hey, Hey, if you don't take care of this guy, Caesar will be ticked off at you. And he knows that threat, and he knows it's probably true. You know, there's so much politics. Human nature is at its premier worst. We see how we really are on this day. This is not an extraordinarily bad day. This is an ordinary day. The kinds of things that we see on this Friday are the kinds of things in some ways that happen every day. But it's the microcosm of good and evil, of right and wrong, doing their dance, doing their thing, and see who will triumph this day. In the midst of that, I just want to point out that uh, Pilate asked a question. It's one of the great questions. You know, Jesus, you know, he's here with the truth. He is the truth. You know, the way, the truth, the life. And Pilate asked the modern day question. Yeah, yeah, what is truth? Everybody's got their own truth. You've got yours, I've got mine, Rome has theirs, the Jews have theirs. Hey, it's a relative world. It's a relative universe. We're all postmodernists now, buddy. What is truth? Yeah, what is truth? You say you're the truth? Well, what is it? And that's the question that you and I have to ask all the time. I've oftentimes said that one of the best ways to market yourself is to put together what I call a truth claim and a belief statement. I've had many, many successful business people who the only thing they had on their brochure was a statement of what they believed to be true about life, business, and service. I believe. It's a powerful thing for you. And I'd be glad to help you because I've got a little booklet that can help you discover how do you come up with the statements about what you believe is true. I sat down one day and took a long, long day, and by the time I was done, over my wall I had 400 little jottings of what I believed to be true. About life, business, success, God, me. And then I tried to see, did I still believe that? And then, what are the big ten truths? These are the two, ten, twenty, one hundred things that I believe, that I believe should guide my life. I've done that work, and perhaps I could help you do that work. But I was answering the question from Pilate. What is truth? And I'm going to encourage you to think about that yourself on the day that Pilate said the premier question in the world. What is truth? 
But he also made a statement, and I'd encourage you to go back and see it. Finally, he presents Jesus to the crowd, and he has this expression, Behold the man! Behold the man! And boy, that's true. Pilate spoke the truth. This is the man. This is the one. (laughs) This is the man. This is the Son of Man, the Son of God, the one who makes things happen and makes it possible. This is the man. And oftentimes what I tell people is that the kingdom of God was an idea. It was codes and laws and principles and practices dating way back to the time when God first entered the experience of Abraham. And then, of course, giving of the law after coming out of Egypt There are the Ten Commandments, and these are the prophets, and this is what the kingdom of God is kind of like. Psalms, Proverbs, prophecies, uh, Ten Commandments. Finally, the whole thing is represented by a man. Now, isn't it unusual, but not unusual, to see that many great organizations find themselves having the man, the woman, that gives a person, a personality, a face to the whole idea. There's no comparison, but Apple, the man, was Steve Jobs. And for many, many organizations, you know, evangelism, the man, was Billy Graham. I'm going to encourage you in your business development that you also begin to say, am I worthy to be for the organization and the enterprise that I'm building? Can I stand up and say, you want to know what this company does or what this organization believes or what this thing is all about, what this enterprise does? There it is. That's the man. That's the woman. They encompass, they reflect, they empower, they demonstrate what it's all about. That's the truth that Pilate told. If you want to know what life and God and uh, our existence on planet Earth is all about, here it is. Behold the man. So on this day, remember... As you think about it, it's for you to think and talk about what is true and for you to understand that fully and joyfully when it comes to the kingdom of God and the way we should live our lives, the truth is, behold the man. And then, what does that mean for you and how you live your life and how you do your business and how you build your brand and how you make your mark? in the marketplace, in your community, in the people you serve, how do you make it happen? Behold the woman. Behold the man. I'm Stan Houston. This is uh, the Jesus Entrepreneur. Thank you for taking time to remind me of what I believe and what I know. I hope it was helpful to you. Again, I'd like to hear from you. Again, RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. Check the good stuff out. We're making it better and better and better. My friend Frank, along with a a friend called Valerie, who is helping us do things we can't do, Growing a good website, trying to make a better podcast, a radio podcast station, a YouTube channel, and then we're going to have ways to have a nice newsletter to keep in touch with you with hopefully some things that will help you in your life, in your business. Again, this is Good Friday. Take it seriously. Reflect on a holy Saturday. 
then celebrate the dance. Celebrate the festivities. Celebrate the fact that the devil lost the deal. Death has been conquered. You can be saved from sin, self, and selfishness that you can live fully alive forever. Amen. So be it. Bye for now. Thank you.